a pretty good hero to match up against Queen of Pain if it's just a one-on-one -on -one scenario. But there is a lot of rotational power from VG Gaming. Uh, Rubik and Winter Wyvern are both perfectly strong as rotational supports. And Tusk is actually one of the few offlaners who's willing to rotate outside of level 6 and actually be very good at it. Okay, so the Sand King's banned by VG Gaming. And you make a really good point there. Like, the Queen of Pain is not afraid of any of these heroes. Independent. Because like, if a Dazzle comes to gank you, whatever. But if a Winter Wyvern comes to gank Alina, she's probably going to die. Yeah. Ten seconds that slow is just too powerful. They are on the dire side, so it's very unlikely that the Winter Five Wyvern is able to snipe a courier like you oftentimes do on the... Uh, if you're dire side Winter Seven Wyvern time. against the Radiant mid. That's the FNG strat. It is. Ichi have one more pick. They probably need to carry unless that's a carry Queen of Pain, and they just don't <laughs> want to match up. And the only time you really do that is, like, when you want to do a uh, surprise Storm Spirit, right? Oh, that would be godly here. If Ichi Gaming last pick Storm. Yeah, you only had the Lena Yule Scepter. If either of these teams last pick Storm, it would be insane. There's the anti mage is already banned out. Whoa, 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 whoa! I mean, Storm, I mean, I mean, you got a good amount to control a Storm Spirit from Vici Gaming. No, dog. Really? I, it, Tusk. You got Queen of Pain potentially Orchid, Rubik, and Winter Wyvern both have single target stuns. V I'm, I'm saying Vici could have taken it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I agree. But then you I said really both, liked... both teams could have last picked Storm Spirit. I would have really liked it if Vici had picked a Storm here. I'm not even saying that because. I like Storm, but the yeah. only counter would have been the Lena Yules. Yeah. And that's not strong enough to deter you. I mean, there is still the four position from Ehome to be picked up. Remaining. They went for the super, super standard Dragonite. Five seconds remaining. Ehome have to take either a second support or Bane. I was just about to say Bane. Me too. I swear to God. Uh, you know what? I, I was about to, but you make the stronger case for it because you called it yesterday. When you saw the Bane, originally you said the Lina, so the mm -hmm. inverse holds true. Yep. So I will give you credit for that. Thank you. Clap, Thank clap. you. It's so good against the Dragon Knight. You just ignore the... care about the armor. You one-shot him. Oh, you're talking about the pure damage of the, the Lina? Yeah. Lina and Dragon Knight yeah. could date. I feel like Bane's pretty good against Dragonite as well because um, of Enfeeble, and then he's a really good controlling hero versus the Queen of Pain. He's got the defensive sleep to help out um, the Tusk. In fact, what do you what happens if you defensive sleep um, against Winter's Curse, or is there do you even have the range to be able Ten to do that? I don't know. That's an interesting. It's question. really it's really right on the mark. Five seconds remaining. I'm not sure because it might not even be a factor because you might not actually be able to. Yeah, get close enough to, to sleep. The, the range is really short. Yeah. Are you hovering over it now? You know what's pretty cool? If you hover over a hero and its ability, you can tell what they got first. On the enemy team. For example, if a Pudge is offlining, you can see if he went for Rod or Hook first by hovering over the Hook. And if it shows you the range guide, then you know they picked it up first. Really? Yeah, and if, huh. and if you know if there's none, then you know they got the Rod first. I don't know how many heroes that's actually effective against, but it does tell you um, which what they shot for. The same holds true for every hero in Dota. If you hover over the range, you know whether they got it or not. It feels like something that shouldn't be intended. I've known it. I've known it for like a like three years, and I've never been able to abuse it. So I just like, <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> there right, there is a way that I can abuse it sometimes. Like uh -huh. when I play Storm, I can know. I know if the Lena against me has gone for... Dragon Slave or Light Strike? Exactly. Yeah. And that does make a difference for me because it means that if you go close to the lane, um, you can tell if you can step into the middle without getting stunned and right-click mm. three times. Yeah. Or if you can actually just step in and she just slaves you, you're you're better off with that. Right. So it does give you some knowledge of it. That's pretty cool though, right? And it's interesting. Yeah. It's All right, so Vici Gaming, they, they did kind of what we were talking about a little bit. It wasn't the last big Storm Spirit, but they do run for the safe lane How Queen of Pain, and they are going to be putting Super as a mid-Dragon Knight. Uh, why do you think they actually chose the Dragon Knight, besides it just being a superhero? It's good against Lina in the laning phase, or at least it survives. Okay. But um, I think it's that, and you want a core that's tanky, right? That can get in in close yeah so it can actually can... fight with the the gyrocopter and 
stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, we saw that demonstrated the last game too. And it, both heroes are, are you want you want your mid hero, to, uh, one of your heroes actually to be able to rush your BKB against a lineup like this. Dragon Knight is not a bad option, but. Certainly. You see though, if you hover over Rubik, you know that he's gotten the lift. But if you hover over his Fable, it doesn't tell you that, that he's gotten his Fable yet. Yeah. It's actually really, really, really specific. The use of it usually doesn't make a difference whatsoever. Yeah. All right, so both Bounty Bruins, it's, we're going to have a split here. Beachy Gaming, I'll get the bottom one. e -home. get the top one. CTY is actually given a um, early sentry because this is a matchup that is um, just like any sort of Lesh Rack matchup at all. Uh, you want to be able to get that mid vision. So CTY may actually be able to counter the uh, super uh, ward. That's why he put it so far to the right, so that you don't place it in the standard vision, just the ward. CTY is going to get harassed oh, up. Oh, wow. He missed the first shot. He'll be able to get the second one. For a second there, I thought he wasn't actually going to get the uh, the dot. dot That's on insane CTY. damage. Yep. I just... 187 damage. And an 8% health burn? That actually just did so much to Let's CTY's health. Got oh, he some found it. small Green action here. Yeah, he placed it far on the right. And he ate it, so he's regening like crazy. <laughs> oh, that's he's true. He's getting it all back. I forgot about that. He's getting it all back. Bottom lane, we had a small amount of action. This is a Rubik Queen of Pain facing up against a Dark Seer Dazzle lane. Uh, once again, I'm seeing these Dazzle go for an early level of Poison Touch. Um, instead of like the heal just to be able to get that really uh, like that early offense especially since dazzle has a really good attack animation i mean he just got three right clicks on the queen of pain in such a small period of time i think it's also just because how went for the um, the dagger first right so he's not gonna be able to run away from it mm -hmm. that's just a good play overall yeah trying to punish him a bit for that He's getting experience. Do you think the Rubik should really be in this lane? I, I mean, it's not like the Dazzle. Like, he keeps the Dazzle from harassing the Queen of Pain, I suppose. But he's also uh, halving the experience of the Queen of Pain, which is kind of a necessity for you to be able to deal with the Darkseer pushes. You need uh, that high level of screen in order to deal with the Ion Shell pushes. I kind of agree with you, actually. I don't think if I should be here. I think you should just stack and pull. Because it's, it's way too hard for him to... You're not, you're not going to harass a Darkseer who's got six armor and a stout shield with a Rubik yeah. right click. Oh, well, that's a play. That's definitely a play right there. Rest DDC in peace. put on the cliff every single hero's nightmare pre the three minute mark. Betty's saying in chat if this were a pub game, he'd be like, hope it was worth it. Like, <laughs> hope the 100 gold was worth it. <sighs> oh, dear. You know what would be sick? If FI was so good at Dota. He right clicks DDC 10 times. Wait, are they actually doing this? Uh, Ice 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 has Snowball. He could easily turn this one around. He's actually just kind of baiting them in a little bit. Uh, YJ takes a lot of damage. He does not have Ice Shards, so. Why did he take all that damage? He took the full Rocket Barrage to the face. I think he just recognized that he was dead, and he was hoping they would just get further and further in. But, Re I mean, really? Yeah, I, the second really? Rocket, because the second Rocket Barrage is there, and they're not going to stop the chase, I think, because YJ's got two levels of the two levels of it mm -hmm. like maybe if it was level one he wouldn't have but in this case i think that that's a somewhat acceptable play okay. but ddc is still stuck on this cliff rotk grabbing the telekinesis and now he's going to be slowed down as the winter wyvern comes in with the arctic burn as well and rtk will take out the queen of pain's right click yeah, this, see this wouldn't be happening right now if ddc hadn't been lifted onto that cliff yep. but because he has it, it makes this lane so hard all of a sudden and now the dual lane doesn't even pay off FY, what a player. Single-handedly winning his team Dota. Finds an opening once again. CTY in the middle lane, sitting at 21 and 3. Our Dragonites, 12 and 2. To be expected, a bit behind CS-wise. Our, uh, our CTY, though CTY is doing an excellent job getting last hits. I mean, I'm expecting Super to sit on 13 CS by 4 minutes in this kind of mid matchup. I'm not expecting Lina to pick up almost every single CS possible. Is it? 
It's pretty close. It, it's it's a little off. It's not he's not six xing, but he's five xing. C two is now going to be caught. Pulled back. Telegan eases into the dragon tail stun, but there's just not quite enough damage. And now Super is actually dropping a little bit low, but I shards will block C T Y out. Lonham tried to delay that one as much as possible, but now Lonham's in some serious trouble. That's why Y J need to come over and help him his buddy out. Rock Barrage almost finishes off Ice Ice Ice. They need to close the distance just a little bit more. The last shot not quite there, and Ice 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 will decide to deny himself to the ancient Super. Now trying to keep ahead of Jarkov but he's got phase boots and he's got enough mana for one more rocket barrage which will be able to get the kill Fenrir well he's got some illusions chasing him that's taking up the tower for YJ now to make another dive DDC on the other side of that one pops the shallow grave shall shadow wave rather and will be able to claim the kill instead of YJ absolutely well worth it there for Ehome as their carry picks up kill after kill it's not even like how is doing a phenomenal job in this bottom lane in regards to CS so really good rotation by him and this is something I really noticed that uh, Ehome are likely to do often, and both Vichy actually and Ehome, is that Yao nice. and YJ always come to fights early. Like, they'll yeah. come to the early smoke gank attempts, they don't really care because they want to abuse the power of the gyrocopter. Like, we saw, uh, I can't remember who it was that Vichy was playing, but remember when they were just diving into the jungle with how, like, at minute six or something like that? And yeah, he, so he, he rotated. They were like a defensive tri-lane gyrocopter, and they used him to go into the dire jungle, right? Yeah, yeah, that's actually exactly what I was referencing, and I just saw shades of that again. It's a good thing, too. They pick up a lot of kills, which would have... It actually just would have been a pick-off on the Lina and the Bane without the, the help of the gyrocopter. Completely turning things around. Still a lot more action in this middle lane. Super dropping quite low due to... Uh, the nukes of the Lina actually pop the Laguna Blade, but the Cold Embrace keeps Super alive and actually brings them all back to full HP with the bottle as well. And he'll find a bounty room at top. Lina unable to contest him for that one. CTY must be so upset right now. As a mid player, one of the things that's so annoying is when you could be winning a lane harder, but the supports are just camping you, so you're just telling yourself, why? This makes me so mad. Like, go do something in the other lanes. Yeah. But it's well worth it for them to help. Um, super every single time because it's just stabilizing the lane for him so there's no reason for them not to do it as a dragon knight he's only 8 cs behind the lena how has been really pressured it, it, do you think he should have gone knowing what his lane matchup was do you think he should have gone like null talismans for better by clicking oh rtk is he caught here yes he certainly is still can use his middle of surge even though it is level two it runs out eventually and now the slow shadow strike and the right clicks We'll finish him off. CTY comes in in order to try and punish Hal, but Hal's still able to stay ahead of the Light Strike Array, so that rotation doesn't even profit. I actually think you should have gotten a bottle. Oh, a bottle for more spamming of... Um... Yeah, so he can just one-shot with a Scream of Pain, mm. and then just bottle once. Then you get a guaranteed, like, four or five creep waves off of it. I would have liked to see that. It would have paid itself off, too. Then he wouldn't have had to build um, that salve... Do you need HP regen anyways in this lane? No. Oh, top lane, Ice 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 slept. And will be able to use the snowball to defend. Nice Ice Shards as well with Super coming in. He jumps forward and will be able to stun up YJ with the ultimate coming out from Hal. They quickly kill one and now go for the second one. Lonham trying to get behind the tower will be fine. Vici Gaming not able to dive it just yet. They don't know if e Home's ready to TP in. Ice Ice, is, Ice, Ice, Ice is just such a monster at diverting attention and forcing people to overextend. He's... I want to see... I don't want to know if this is offensive, but he's really annoying. Like, he just prods you and prods you and prods yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, wow. He did not read that exchange correctly. Blinked in, tried to finish off Lonham. Lonham actually got off the brain sap, and Hao may actually die because of that. He's got to blink up in a second tier. So he's going to get out, but he's still going to be in a really bad position. He goes back to the tier 1 tower. No TP's in from Ehome, so he gets away, but goes from almost getting a kill to now having to walk all the way back to base. I don't know why I thought that would be offensive, though. That's that's the best way to characterize Ice Ice Ice's offline, right? Yep. It just bothers you until you overcommit. I completely agree. I mean, I've seen him get kills where he really just shouldn't have as a Tusk. And that's because he's he's playing, like, really aggressive, and he, you think you can manage to pick up a kill on him. Like, you want to make sure he, like, especially as a Tusk, that you don't allow him in a two versus one scenario for him to get free experience. So you try and punish him for being forward and he turns it around on you. 
it's almost as if his reputation of being an annoying player precedes him and it, it forces you to overreact. Like, you know he's such a good player and he does playmaking abilities that you want to shut him out if you can, and then you overcommit for it. Oh, super. He's going to find his stack taken. At least a little bit. YJ grabs two of the bigger creeps. Tier 1 tower is being pressured. They're going to lose their ward. They know, I mean, with the stack being taken like that, it's pretty obvious Ehome had some sort of vision. Yeah, and they're doing a good job right now. I like that they rotated the gyro in for this, and they actually killed the, the Rubik that they find in the jungle at the same time. And Ehome's doing a good job right now of invading the jungle early and just setting the Dyer's tempo, and there's not a whole lot that Vici attack. Gaming can do. What I'd like to see from Vici, though, is some sort of attempt at a smoke and to try to push... Uh, a tower with the Dragon Knight level six, like he has his he has his Elder Dragon form, and they're not really utilizing it. I'm not sure if they can, but I feel like at the very least, you should try to pressure early on, just to set tempo because that's why you pick the Dragon Knight. Yeah. And it's not even like the Queen of Pain is doing so well that you can avoid doing that. Like she needs the infusion of gold too. Do you rotate to the Dragon Knight, or does Dragon Knight rotate to you? I think the correct thing to do here is. Um, pressure something like the carry and then just immediately push that top tower down like make it so fast that they have no chance to respond because it's not actually about the heroes that you have it's about how quickly you can assemble and get ready for the push because you remember what we saw in ehome's game where they tried to tp one by one to defend the tower yeah and they got obliterated but it's better to do this especially like, like a safe lane tower which has a very obvious mechanic around it where you're able to get around it essentially surround it so if you do tp in you can be completely surrounded by heroes nice i called it they did they're doing it yep. the problem here though is that they did it right under this board yeah not great not great yeah ehome have like constantly been trying to keep up mid vision it's twice now their their middle ward has been countered uh but the third one does pay off big dividends it seems why didn't they just smoke down here to guarantee it uh, they would have gone they would have they would have pushed and gotten the tower for sure. But now they're just wasting time and they can't really do anything. Maybe they still go for the tower here because they're all grouped up and it's a waste not to, but yeah. still, you could have gotten a kill onto the gyrocopter and that would have been worth it even more. And now it gives Ehome time to counter plan and go for a new idea. But yeah, the reason why you do this over going for something like the safe lane is just because it's not worth it to kill the off laner at the same time. Snowball, he's going to the neutrals. He goes over, puts the ice charge, trying to block them out. That actually would have been such a clutch play, but he was still in range of the rock barrage and will die. Man, that that really hurt them. They used their first dragon form to get that top tower. They're not able to bring it down. They commit a smoke and they lose ice, ice, ice. Dyer's so Ehome with the good reads and that ward just did work. Slow down, CTY. Hit by the Arctic Burn, Super will get in range of the Dragon Tail, and the burst damage is almost enough to finish him off, but now they get it back, him and heal up, and CTY will turn around with his double damage rune looking for more. Uh, call down now, YJ will slow out FY, and oh, Ichi now jumping in with Hal, managed to finish off the lean up, but so too does the Queen of Pain fall, so heavy commitment there, one for one trade off. That's probably not worth it for. Uh out there because he's not ahead and on top of that he just gave up a killing spree and yeah. as an enemy mid hero it's not that bad because he'll catch up and Lena only really needs the Yule Scepter to be useful but if you're going to go for the Orchid on how especially on a hero like Queen of Pain you have to get it at a reasonable time because you just get so much diminishing returns right because the uh the gyrocopter is going to get so farmed, he's going to get a BKB eventually, so the atom will get phased out. And once Lena has a Yule Scepter, she just Yules this herself. And it yeah. gets rid of it immediately. Yeah, and you usually try and get a Glimmer Cape on one of the supports in a decent timing. It should be like the Bane this game, right? So Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of reasons why that's just an issue, I guess, for them early. But uh, there's another smoke picked up by Ehome. What I'd like to see is uh, another smoke rotation by them. What they can do here is... They can either go for the mid, actually, because they see vision right here. So what I'd like to see them do is invade the jungle and go around or go for this bottom kill with Lion M's ultimate. It just depends on who shows himself first, but I think this mid kill is easier because they can take the tower at the same time. Oh, well, Ice Shards caught RTK, but FY isn't in there for the telekinesis in time. So the rotation around from Ehome will catch a hero instead. Winter Wyvern will go down. 
And they'll take this tier one tower. The trade-off isn't really much of a trade-off for Vici Gaming. A tower for a tower, but they don't get a hero kill. Yeah, and um, like I'm starting to see now, like what the teams want to do. It's actually getting a lot easier as we cast games on a on a side note. Like I can mm -hmm. I can feel when the smoke is coming and why. And it's actually just it's so smart by the teams because it's not just about grouping up and pressuring a tower. It's about trying to get something more out of it so that you can continue to go. Because if they if that was a top tower, for example, they could have killed one or two, pushed the tower, and then by the time anybody from Vici rotates, they can even get to the tier two tower in time, like they did for top. So that's it's actually really neat to see the smoke utilized in such a way that it has a ripple effect on the entire game. Orchid is about to be finished up by uh, How. He's got the second Oblivion Staff on the way, but there are some major soft counters. We already talked about the Yules and BKB that will eventually be coming in for heroes like Lena and our Gyrocopter, respectively, but we also have the mech. Uh, I like to refer to the mech as a soft counter to the Orchid. Probably better than a soft counter. That's actually really good. Yeah, I guess I always like, um, usually when in reference to it is like the SF. Yeah, yeah. I, I call the like the, the the mech is the soft counter against the Queen of Pain Orchid, and then the BKB is like the hard counter. That's a good way to put it. I like that. It's really annoying too, just mm -hmm. to play against it. But this is a really good smoke attempt. I don't think that Vici Gaming know this is happening. Uh, Ice 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 is sitting behind it in the hopes that it is, but they should be able to burst this down because Lanem is his ultimate right now, and I don't know if. He can survive through this. Oh, he's on a ball save. Lonham is actually blocked out for the ice shards. Immediately, there is a TP. Lonham's going to be put up in the air. Light Strike Array lands on ice, ice, ice. There is the cold embrace to be able to save him, but they needed the winter's curse. There it is. Now it snags Lonham. They will be able to stun him down. CTY is still trying to turn things around with a Laguna Blade or something, but it's just a bit too risky. So he runs himself out, realizing that Lonham is very much dead. With the heavy rotation from Vici Gaming, this also opens up an opportunity for Ehelm to push down top. Yeah, I think this is the, if this happens, we don't really care. They want to be able to take this, and how might even overcommit for this? Go for, just go for DDC, and hope that you can get away from YJ in time, but um, he doesn't actually go for the commitment, but Ehome is trying to make stuff happen, and it's just Ice 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 reading the situations correctly. Like, it's just him playing well. The fact that he was just sitting behind Fenrir, because he thinks there's a chance. Dual Scepter, there is once again Fenrir is here to be able to defend his ally. There's the, well, unfortunately the Fiend's Grip is holding him in. The Cold Embrace is only delaying the inevitable, it seems. Ice 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 is, well, sorry, super rather. His tanky is all hell, but he's not going to be able to survive through it. Mid Tower's going to get pressured, but they shouldn't be able to take this. Like People are going to rotate in for this one by one, and uh, ROTK is always going to be the person they send in because he's got that mech. Oh, Orchid, ROTK, he's going to be bursted down. Sonic Wave to finish him off. How now is ready to go for DDC. He rotated in, tried to help out his ally, but he's got no other rotations to help him out. He's got the Shallow Grave, now the TP start coming. He actually puts the Weave onto FY, who stole Surge earlier. Left hand side, uh, yeah, YJ is actually in a bit of trouble there. Yeah, How did a good amount of damage to him. Turns on the Rock Barrage, though, and Queen of Pain is forced to retreat nice and quick. Still, though, that was Ehome losing a core, almost losing their support in order to stop it. They had to rotate almost their whole entire team to middle. I'm surprised that Howe didn't go for the kill. Like, I thought that was... Even if he just gets the dagger off, then you force... You probably kill DDC there, right? Like, if you get the dagger scream, get him to 1 HP, even if he heals himself. I think the... Oh, it's actually only one it, level of dagger. Yeah, it's only level 1. Still... But still, Cap, you gotta go for the attempt, man. You don't want to live in a world of what ifs. But what if he throws out the Shadow Strike and ends up dying because of it? That's true, I guess. Better to live in regret than actual death. That's a good quote. No, it's not. Let's move on with our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Super, he's got the early uh, Ogre Club. Let's play the guessing game here. Is it the BKB? Is it the Sange S and Y builds? It's Man. gotta be BKB, right? I'm sure this time it's the Heaven's Halberd. <laughs> <laughs> no way it's the Heaven's Halberd. It's gotta be a BKB. Like It's gotta there's, be. There's actually no way that you go for the S and Y in this case. You don't I don't know if you can because you've got a core that's 
already really weak in how like how has to go for a BKB second after if you go for the orchid build if you want to start sp sound smart to your friends just say he's gonna get a BKB even before he picks up the ogre club because having 800 HP or whatever is not cutting it at all just have to go for it every time and how is gonna die for this at top and nobody from ehome is really quite prepared for this he's just waiting for his ultimate to refresh if you're wondering why he's just sitting there because yeah, he, needs, he, needs he needs to the burst. burst right yeah. Oh, he's four seconds. When it gets to about two, I think I could foresee him just going for this. Waiting for this wave to come in. And here we go. On him. Just feels... I think there's just too many heroes off map for him to really feel comfortable with this. And sure enough, like, <laughs> right as maybe he, like, was thinking about making the jump, all of a sudden YJ shows up. And now, well, YJ would be a decent target, but I think he's just a bit too tanky with the uh, SNY build. I think if he ulted him, though, he would kill him. With the dagger. What if YJ just straight TPs out? Oh, uh, I guess I would counter it, yeah. I don't know if he can do that much damage. It's probably not even sitting on the attack. side now, though. Yeah, now it's, it's past <laughs> first. It goes from easy kill to hard kill to impossible. Yeah, not now. Then you just give up. <laughs> You're just like, well, that was time wasted. But again, it's better to live in regret. Than, than to <laughs> You're gonna try and make this a thing, yeah, aren't it's, you? It's a thing already, man. <laughs> All right, I don't. The game is being a little bit passive, but I. F okay, so you've got a BKB on your DK, but you don't have Elder Dragon form. So what you probably do, if I had to read into the future is just farm for another 30 seconds, and then when the dragon form is about to come up, you go for the smoke um, for probably, I'd say you go for the mid tower, or you go for two in the bottom. You probably go for two in the bottom, and then you go for the one in mid. Because you can you can definitely get two in the bottom, is what I would do if I were um, if I were Vichy Gaming. So what Ehome have to do is just farm as much as they can in the jungle, and then consolidate their power soon, because... They have to. They have to know that something is going to be up soon. Like they don't have the best ward vision right now. If I had to take a, what happens if I hit F3? Oh, don't hit F3. If yeah, you're afraid of the dark. dark. <laughs> I mean, it's real dark for both teams. There's only one ward on the side of Vici Gaming. I guess Ehome is actually more comfortable with this because they have more tier one towers. Yeah. Still, jeez. The night is dark and full of terrors. Okay, so the dra Elder Dragon form is back up. Do they have a smoke on anybody? I'd like to see a smoke. They almost had the Blink Dagger up on our TK. That's a significant team fight factor. Oh, definitely is. Especially since there's only one BKB right now. Yeah. And Wall is so good versus Dragonite. Obviously better when it's a level 3 Dragon form, Radiant's but it's still good. They're taking this mid tower from super. Maybe they even fallen. immediately hit the bottom if they're fast enough, but oh, TP reaction. Yeah, they could actually maybe catch super if he sticks around. Yule Scepter and Light Strike right. BKB immediately pops, turns around, goes to CTY. Dragon Tail will control him. CTY is definitely done for. The question is, oh, maybe not. He actually gets a defensive sleep. Now the bounce back, but it's still not enough. CTY has healed himself up. Ice 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 with a brilliant snowball, though, will be able to help out Super Ice. Will die in the end. Super's trying to get away. Sonic Wave will actually finish off the Dark Seer and hits two other heroes on top of that one. Lana may be the target. Nope, YJ actually comes back to try and finish off Super, dropping him low enough to be able to get the kill. Fenrir now the next target, as there's just no nukes to finish off YJ. They have heal after heal to keep him alive. Our Queen of Pain went for the kills in the back, but didn't actually find the lead. Oh, he went for it again. He goes for YJ. He gets him in the end. He's committed himself, though, and will end up dying. FY comes in. He actually got the Orchid on Alana, but unfortunately, the Rubik can't output enough damage to finish him off. So uh, FY should just be able to run himself away, especially since there's a nice little haste rune bottom. Though he doesn't see it. It's nighttime. Actually, Lottom's going to catch up. Oh, they're going to go for this, actually. Yeah. F FY? Oh, they're backing. Uh, I actually, why? oh, I guess Ice 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 was up, but still, um, a really good trade for Ehome. The fact that they didn't lose their their mid hero there was insane. Like CTY had 100 HP the entire time. How went for the blink up? Misses it just barely. The funny thing is CTY stayed with. 34 HP to farm neutrals while that was he all did. happening. And the Queen of Pain almost found him because of that. Yeah, it was just, I can't believe this guy. He min-maxes like nobody I've ever seen before. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a compliment. Like, just the fact that he's that courageous is, uh, I don't know. It's insane. But Makes you wonder how he even sits down in his seat. 
<sighs> I wasn't trying to go there. I wasn't trying to go there. Darkseer gets a blink dagger. Bane got a glimmer cape, like you said. Man, you're so smart. There's a medallion though on the dazzle, so this is, this has got to be a rush. Like yeah. smoking a rush at any point is probably okay. You're probably waiting for your gyro to get a BKB before you do that though, because just in case. Yeah, there's no reason to force the fight when he's so close to a BKB. Like, you might as well just wait for it. And they've got incredibly... I, I almost feel like they're s incredibly superior team fight at that point. Yeah. With I, the, the BKB and the Blink Dagger. The, just the two paired up. Like, they can get a vacuum, call down, light strike array. And then you've got this BKB with Weave Medallion. The Gyrocopter just is going to be unkillable. I mean, he already is with Dazzle sitting up on the side. Literally unkillable with Shallow Grave, but... I'm it's just going to be so hard to bring him even close to requiring the Shallow Grave in the first place. Okay, so Vici Gaming know that the Roshan is the next objective. So what do they do here? They go for the smoke. They're looking for the pickoff here. They're not even trying to... I, they can't smoke a Roshan for themselves. And Ehome should know that and gather up because they're the only potential right now is for somebody to get picked off and here it is. Yep, ROTK is done for. And Vici Gaming, they actually pop the ultimate. Super will gladly take this Ancient stack now. Ehome... Unable to contest at all will probably... Uh, are they... Do they actually lose Rosh? It's just too easy to defend, right, on Dire's side? No way that Vici go for this, because yeah. they don't know who has buyback. And we saw what happened last time, right, when they could just buy back and Vici were on the side where they could just buy back, go for the Rosh at their own. Mm -hmm. You don't want to soften up Rosh on for the enemy team and then... Yeah, the worst thing is Darkseer buys back, TPs into the Tier 1 tower, blinks in, vacuums you, and you're you're caught inside the Roshan pit. Yeah, but once you have a BKB on the Gyrocopter, I think you go for a smoke of your own and then try to set up for the Roshan, I think is the play, or even just run in there and go do it yourselves because it's not a whole lot that you have to wait for. You've got a medallion. You've got far better Roshan uh, talent than the enemy team does, and they do have a smoke prepared on DDC, and I'd be surprised if they don't go for the smoke here because there's no other moves at this moment, but how it's CTI, surprise! That's a great setup. Dead. Really smart. He broke the trees, right? With yeah, he, he killed the trees with Light Striker right here. And then zip zoop. Something else. Sits there. Okay. Now that they got that kill, they don't have to smoke for this road. No, it just <laughs> walk into the pit and Lee Home already had, you know, kind of the it's a little bit questionable, but it feels like they have the stronger five versus five team fight right now. Now that it's five versus four, oh, it's not going much for this. Of a question. Oh boy, this could be a mistake. They don't have the dra They they don't have the Dragonite ultimate. I'm I'm super questioning this right now. Maybe they're just trying to poke at Ehome. Slow them down. See if they'll uh, yeah. See if they'll slow down or even stop. Fenrir has the opportunity to get a really good Winter's Curse, maybe. But now he's gonna be caught by the vacuum. He's not in a good position. Ehome are making sure they're remaining very staggered. They're just leaving ROTK essentially to chase down that bird, but Ehome actually not going to be able to get the kill with the Icicle Shards, blocking him out. RTK is going to be brought back in, but there goes the call. The rest the Ehome starts surging forward, and Super's now going to be forced to turn and fight this one, but there goes the Aghanims with the Laguna Blade, ripping through the Dragonite. How makes a blink away, but this is disastrous for Vici Game. They're going to lose one, two, maybe even a third YJ. It's not even going to be close. He easily survives through that ultimate. Ooh, ho, ho. Vacuum and a Light Strike Array. They take out three. And Ehome only dropping the Dazzles. They pursue into a Tier 2 tower now. I'm actually really surprised that Vici Gaming had gone for that fight. I think they thought because of the enclosed structure that having the Queen of Pain plus the Winter Wyvern would be enough to win the fight. But they weren't even in position. And after the Aegis got taken, especially when it went on CTY, then you know that he's going to get his Laguna Blade off no matter what. And he already demonstrated that he had the Ags at top, and you can just check to see that he's 16. He actually ripped through Super, so for him to stay there, they must have felt really confident, but I think it was a false confidence, because as we saw in that fight, it was not even very close. It wasn't even that ROTK had a great vacuum mall, it's just that they had so much to run at them with. At this point, Vici Gaming... Do you just give up on fighting them anymore? You can probably, you probably can't play the split push game because of the Eganim's right level 16 uh, Lena, because you can almost one shot top. Like, if Hal's low at all, he just stuns you from fog and kills you. You could very easily pick up like a Blink Dagger or a Shadow Blade at this point for the Lena as well for extra pickoff potential. I would really like the Shadow Blade right now. Yeah. Because then you can build into the Silver Edge 
and the late game Dragonite who's already burned through most of his BKB. Like he's just down to eight seconds. Uh, but he goes for the safe option. He goes for a BKB on his own, which tells me a lot about this game. It means that Ehom are they really want to go for it now using the Aegis. They don't want to play the passive game and mm -hmm. a lot of teams with the Aegis they go for the map control. But I think that they just want to get into fights or they anticipate getting into fights. Ehom heading for objectives sometime soon. There's still two towers up or two outer towers on the side of Vici Gaming, both middle and top. But what if VG Gaming have to be able to play defense if necessary? Uh, Sustain is now picked up by Super. S and Y come eventually. He needs the HP. CTY coming in, trying to catch somebody now. Super's actually already a little low. They know that the Elder Dragon form has popped too. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be really happy when they see that. And he's got a BKB. They're pinging for the top because they think it's going to be easier. Everybody from uh, VG Gaming are set up for this. Remember what I told you about defending. It's it's not about um, the creep wave or what heroes you have. It's about being there in time. And if you notice that how's at bottom and now they're rotating people through for the defense, but it's almost going to be too late because everybody from E Home is going to be in position. So look how far back people from VG Gaming now need to sit. Bit by bit, that tier two tower will fall for VG Gaming. Just don't have an answer to the push. Nor should they. I mean, they just got to go for split pushing. That's you're seeing what Howe's doing right now at the bottom lane. He seems to be going for the Assault Kuras build. And our Dragonite's just farming out the jungle all the meanwhile. I actually haven't seen FY steal anything too pivotal. So I don't know if that's just well played by Ehome, or if he just hasn't been in a position where he's able to. What are the big abilities that you want to steal as a Rubik in this game? Fiend's Grip probably is really effective. Uh, anything from Gyrocopter that's not, <laughs> that's not flat cannon, <laughs> it's probably pretty decent. Uh, the obvious one is probably the Grave, the Vacuum, the Wall, or the Laguna Blade. Right. I guess he just hasn't had a lot of opportunities, though, because his, his team is always on the back foot. FY's hero is kind of useless if his team is already dead by the time he gets to be able to do anything. Hopefully that Blink Dagger will change his fortunes. There's the S and Y for the Dragonite. And we also see e Home starting to set up for that Tier 2 middle lane. Still hoping to be able to utilize the Aegis, essentially, to bully Vici Gaming away from team fighting. Bonham is trying to get Hao right now. They see him as Vision, too. Oh, he's going to get Glimmer caped in. He has no idea this is coming. Yeah, Fiend's Grip to lead things off. And Hao is very, very, very dead. Too much chain stuns. He's down for 60 seconds without a buyback. E home guaranteed take this tier two middle tower. Maybe they can even push uphill. They don't know he doesn't have a buyback, but they may just try and push uphill anyway and force him into a non-existent buyback. I think they know because he just bought the BKB and when it comes to relative time, they know that they've taken control of the jungle. So if he spot this play mail, and he just recently did, then by basic math, they sh should know that he doesn't have the buyback, but it, the thing is, it doesn't matter if he doesn't have buyback or not, because he won't push into Vici Gaming's lineup. There's just too much opportunity for things to go wrong going up high ground. The better thing to do, especially when you're dire, is use the Aegis, get out, reset, and then look for the next fight. Like, during this time where you know you have the advantage, just try not to get multiple heroes picked off. So it's actually not bad for e -home to split up right now, farm. You lose one or two heroes during the time while you're waiting for Roshan to respawn, that's okay. But as long as your entire team doesn't get wiped before that fight, then you hold on to your advantage. <laughs> like you're, You'll probably see like ROTK do something crazy and then die, but it won't matter because <laughs> it'll only be him that dies. And then yeah. Ehome just sets up for the next Roche fight. Like That's all that matters to them because uh, there wasn't enough time on that Roshan to take all the tier twos and go for the tier threes. But the next Roshan, they'll be able to do that. He may not even die. He's got a full BKB. Does he? Yep. ROTK. Go you, ROTK. You're so farmed. He's farming very well. I mean, he's died five different times. He actually actually hasn't picked up very many kills, but he's still farmed the exemplary. This is so scary right now. Because if Vichy loses this fight, then the game just ends for them. Because they would, they would be pushing right by their tier 4s. They would have to force all the buybacks back. And then from there, Ehome can just back out and they realize their net worth lead is so huge. Then Vici Gaming would have to go for some sort of YOLO all in smoke to try to get something out of it. And they're not even dire side, so it, I don't even know if it pays off. And Ehome's just getting more and more rich. What's the theory between Butterfly and MKB? 
MKB gives you better damage, but Butterfly gives you better survivability. Okay. And in this game? You don't need it. Because um, if you go for the Butterfly, it probably doesn't matter because the Queen of Pain's not going for DPS uh, right now anyways. Like, her damage is actually quite low. And probably more important than that, too, is that um, the Dragon Knight has, like, nothing. Like, he, he doesn't have an Assault Curse. He doesn't have... Um, any sort of damage dealing item. Like, he only does 160 a hit. You've got enough HP and backup on your team to be able to survive that. You want to be able to break through the HP of VG Gaming. It's a good thing VG Gaming didn't move over a little bit further to the right. Ehome, I kind of like this five manning. They seem to know that there was a smoke from VG Gaming. I can only presume from one of these very aggressive wards that they have, like this one. Yeah, there it is. They actually realized it. Gem. From the Dragonite, we'll pop it now. Ooh, double damage for CTY. Glad they take that one. Uh, Lena going for the kind of the Queen of Pain build. The Salt Curass is your next item. Yeah, they needed to be able to fight the physical damage that VG Gaming have. Like, once he gets that, then the entire E Home squad is going to be so hard to kill. Because nobody from VG actually does too much damage. There's no Deso or anything like that on their team. Yeah. Um, how is so far away from the possibility of being able to get an assault cross his team's on the back foot already if he buys an ac without buyback then what was the point of that 11 18 35 minutes in it's a 12,000 gold lead right now 7500 experience ehome looking pretty crisp pretty clean we said this a lot about ehome see whether or not they drop the ball this game I, 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 I feel like they aren't simply because they are far enough ahead no. It's in do you, this game do you not remember yesterday? I mean... <laughs> Why do you say these things? Now you've jinxed them. Why do you tell me this? I have faith, Blitz. I have faith. You know what? I'll just... I know nobody on Ehome, really. Like, I know Actually, their storylines, but... Tower is under attack. <laughs> you're so dumb. That joke's been made a you're, thousand times. You're like, L you're like LD with his how jokes. I just, I can't do this right now. I need better... <laughs> I, listen, I avoid the how jokes because they're overly obvious. You do one more, you do one more bad meme or pun and back to BTS for Blitz Dota. <laughs> you're, you're real close to losing me right now. <laughs> There's a lot that I won't stand for. <laughs> that's, oh, that's CTY actually went Shiva's instead. I, I, I really thought that the attack speed of Fiery Soul would just uh, make CTY go, I'm going to do the same thing as uh, a late game Queen of Pain does and go for the AC. Yeah, I would have liked it. I guess... Oh, uh, no, I, I would have actually liked it if she went the AC, because ROTK can go for the Shivas at some point if he wants to. I guess right. he's so far away from it, but... Um, I mean, it helps them regardless. The attack speed slow on Shivas is the most underrated thing in Dota. The fact that people don't really talk about it so much, and you only mention the active... The, what is the passive for it again? How, how much does it slow? You know, the attack speed? I don't even... 45. Know. So it would pretty much negate almost... Hyperstone? Is that what it is? Sounds about right. Wait, am I right here? Yeah. Oh, it's 55 for a Hyperstone. So almost a full Hyperstone you lose in attack speed. Attack. And when you look at Vici Gaming's lineup, Super has no attack speed items. Uh, same with the Queen of Pain. Like She's got a Hyperstone now, but... Okay, she's bought a full AC. And the Roche attempt is coming. She's got to farm her... She's just got to farm. <laughs> like, a lot here. How much does she need for her buyback? If there's not a butterfly on Gyrocopter, do you go another item besides MKB? Uh, do you go the site? On who? Because I mean, that would be a pretty differential factor, right? In that last game, Queen of Pain needed to go for the MKB because of the butterfly. Um, and obviously, the Scythe no longer applying that break mechanic, um, no longer taking away that evasion, means that it's a lot less effective versus butterfly. I would... This time around, our co-op, you know, could go for it. I would like a Scotty probably on her. You need raw HP, right? For to deal with the Lena ultimate. If she gets Fiend Script or takes any sort of damage, the crazy thing is how would just have to run. Like, it's not even about the fact that he's got a BKB. It's that if he gets hit by one nuke, then he goes under the threshold. And then he would have to just run away. But yeah, Ehome, they, you know, they did as I asked them to. They waited. They were patient. And now they're going to get a free Roshan out of it, and this time it's going to go to YJ, who's going to work on a butterfly. Ooh, RTK, he's been caught, but ooh, what a great vacuum. That's a three-man setup there. RTK, though, ball oh, a better ice shards there from Ice Ice Ice. Actually blocks out the rest of uh, Ehome. 
He managed to throw out the ultimate there. YJ still moves forward. He ran all the way around that one in order to go on to Fenrir, but now he's being chased on down and almost losing his life, but he's actually keeping himself oh, alive thanks to that uh, extra bit of damage. YJ, he'll finally lose his Aegis here, but they managed to take out four of Vici Gaming and Ehome. I think are now ready to just four man into the enemy base and see what buybacks they can force. There's one buyback left, and the scary thing right now is the Queen of Pain doesn't have enough for a buyback. Like, maybe you even sell your wand here and just get it back guaranteed. Like, maybe that's the play. Because if he doesn't, if they just push up high ground right now and they realize that he doesn't have buyback, then the game can just end from here on out. Because once they see that the Dragon Knight can't buyback here, they're going to be really happy and just continue to go. Because it's really, it's just the tower that's deterring them. But if they can get the tower down before any of the buybacks happen, then Ehome is going to feel really confident right now. They've got all of their heroes with them, with the exception of ROTK, who's coming in right now, who hadn't used his BKB, his mech, or his wall. So everything from him is up right now. So this is going to mean guaranteed backs down. Uh, from the side of Vici Gaming, but how has to be careful. He actually has doesn't have buyback for sure. Well, they choose to back out. They just got the melee racks, the important one anyway. Uh, FY Blink Sword immediately after his TP, hoping to grab somebody, but it's not happening. And I, and I, I agree. <laughs> like I really feel like Ehome could still win a fight, right-handedly. So Vici Gaming, they got to be careful with their aggression, man. You got to think of it in terms of. Um... What does an ideal fight look like for both teams, and how easy is it for them to get there, right? Ehome lost their Darkseer, who didn't cast a single ability or spell near his team, and they still won the fight. Yeah. Like, excluding the Aegis. Like, even if um, even if your Gyrocopter dies there in an ideal situation for Vici Gaming, and YJ dies, they still won the fight dominantly. It still would have been at worst 4, to, four for 2, I think. And so that's what happens in an ideal fight. And now it just gets even worse, because you just fall further behind in farm. So it's going to be pretty difficult for Beachy Gaming in closest distance. Because oftentimes what usually holds you into the game, like despite 20k gold leads, is that you never really had that one dream fight, right? But Vici Gaming had a pretty... It was a pretty decent fight for them to take, and they still weren't able to close it out. And ROTK might be the target again. Yeah, he's got the Blink Dagger, but it's already been Walrus punched up. Pops his BKB, now turns to fight VG Gaming. Ice Ice Ice, seems like he's gonna go down. Light Strike Array lands on him before he can get the Snowball and the Aghanim's Laguna Blade to finish him off. CTY is getting quite strong now. He's got 4,500 gold nearly. He's, oh, gonna he's pick going to Refresher. All right, going for it. Is that the item? He can one-shot the DK if he gets it. He could one-shot pretty much anybody on Vici Gaming's roster. The DK would live with like 600 health, but at that point, you just run away, right? You probably won the fight anyways, but we'll see if this is more successful than Resolutions yesterday, as he wasn't able to cast it, and we saw him when he got it on the Queen of Pain, he wasn't able to use it. How will survive with 3 HP? <laughs> just straight Laguna Blades. <laughs> Straight, just double Laguna Blades, he will survive with 3 HP. Wait, really? He has 1800 right now. 1803, double Laguna Blades, that's 1800 damage. No, it's I, 950. No, no, it's 19. Oh my god. It's 19. I'm yeah. sorry. He would die. A little tired. He would straight up die. Yeah. Scary. Wow. He's got enough money for it too. He just sells his bottle. Wait, how spooky. much is the. How much is it? Is it 1800 for the. 1875 for the. No, it's 1800 flat. He's got the money for it once he farms like one creep. Or he just pops his bounty rune and sells the bottle. Surprised that he's not buying it in full. Maybe they're afraid? Could be. Maybe they just want to make sure there's no opportunities for, for throws and they have buyback available. Take a look at Vici Gaming's vision right now. They mean, are so afraid. Mean nothing? You don't even need... Um, you don't even need smokes anymore. Like, to get map control just because like this is what happens when you get far behind people don't understand the snowball effect of it but you lose all control of your jungle because you can't you can't just farm the jungle anymore it's not that easy e home are waiting out uh waiting out the opportunity find a pick off they're just absolutely securing the win they don't want another situation. <laughs> I applaud them for this. They, they honestly really need a win. That's yeah. true. They they really do. I I applaud them for this decision. I'm so happy for them. How's going to get an MKB though? This is the right decision for him. Once there's a butterfly on the other side and your Dragon Knight can't, then one of you has to do it.
Nice. It's all kind of hovering here in this enemy jungle. I'm not sure what they think they can find with just the two of them. He's had a rough game. He certainly has. He's only got the Solar Crest. Again, like, they, they pop, like, even if they do use Winter's Curse, I'm just not sure how they can kill somebody besides a uh, poor support. ROTK. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't actually see how. Uh, I guess he just was so far up on the minimap yeah. I didn't see him. Yeah. Uh, ROTK has so much harm for an offlaner right now. He has yeah. the fake six stack items. It's like none of the items that you really want in the late game, but he's got them. All right, so E-Home is probably, they might even just wait for the next Aegis. They've had some rough luck. <laughs> I don't even know. That is, uh, that would be a pretty insane wait. Oh, you mean being up a Rex in 20k gold? Like, I mean, why would you... I mean, no, seen... waiting out the next Aegis. Invisibility. If if you can wait five more minutes to secure a win <laughs> in the International 2015 Austin, you do it, okay? You just... You don't... You don't not do it. I love how desperate you get I just, to see a win for some of these teams. I, that, I don't even... Are, I'm not even biased. lose after lose. You're not biased for a certain team. You, we just watch a team lose over and over again, and you're just like, they have to get a win. Oh, bottom. CTY's got an invis. Oh. Okay, how's... Oh, God, I would love to see sense. it. Good game sense, but yeah, for people that don't know, me and Austin have just casted so many comebacks, and I don't even feel, I'm not biased, I just feel bad for the team that loses that 10, 15, 20k gold lead, because they don't wait for the next Roshan, they just, you, come on, this is TI, just wait it out, they, they can afford to wait it out, that's the thing, There's nobody, I want them to, I don't even care that I've been casting all day or whatever, I just want them to secure the win for themselves. Because Vici Gaming can still definitely do it. Like, they have the heroes for it. Their Queen of Pain is absolutely stacked to the gills. Super's got 3k HP. YG might even be the target here at top. Oh, they're going for it, but... One step ahead of Vinmir. He's okay. He's got 5-2 to two move speed with that flutter. There's no way they're catching up to him. Wait, does he have base 481 move speed? Alright. Oh my god. He's almost hasted at all really? times. Boots of travel and S and Y. That's, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. <laughs> all right, helicopter. What a hero! <laughs> what, a, what an absolute monster! <laughs> Let, let's go ahead and take away the animation of Rocket Barrage while he's also one of the fastest heroes in the game. Whatever, man. <laughs> Don't sound so salty. <laughs> <laughs> There's a DD rune for them too. Like this yeah. is just. This was made for them. <laughs> this is like. You don't get many more opportunities to get a free roach on than that. Yeah. So. E-Home are just farming up the map right now. They're just build as big of an advantage as they can. They go for the Roshan before they go for the high ground. So uh, I applaud them for their efforts right now. Vici Gaming, to their credit, is doing a wonderful job of keeping in this game. Like, nobody's been picked off. They're finding farm opportunities despite the fact that they're playing this game more or less blind. Like, I can't imagine that Vici Gaming don't have a smoke. Or E-Home. E-Home has to have... Yeah, they've... The crazy thing is EOM has two smokes and they know that Vici Gaming don't have vision up and they're still not willing to risk a fight. So go with them. They managed to keep the uh, network it's not dipped up or down really at all. So even as this is kind of a farm fest, Vici Gaming hasn't managed to make any sort of slow comeback. They keep on trying to do like aggressively push out this lane with the Queen of Pain and then she hides in the jungle waiting for some like a solo person to defend. Uh, every single time, it just doesn't work out for them. Nobody's going to go solo defend at this point yeah. in the game. Mark my words. Nobody is going <laughs> to just sit behind him, Lanham. Nobody is going to solo push. Watch Lanham just, like, wander off all of a sudden. Don't get distracted here. <laughs> Eyes on the prize, buddy. <laughs> go de-award that. Let them know that you're behind him. <laughs> I'm just waiting for that moment. Oh, they're separating. Oh, no. They're separating. <laughs> Mark my this words. This isn't happening. Soda. This isn't Mark happening. Mark my words. Walrus Punch, Snowball, Winter's Curse. The oh. first damage is real. Oh, boy. They tried to catch Super in the middle lane, but that didn't happen. Comeback time? I'm Comeback time? I'm separating myself from this, <laughs> this situation. 
I'm just, I'm separating myself from the situation. I'm gonna try to remain passive and neutral. <laughs> You're not getting this, emotionally you know, yeah, you know in what? I'm win. really not. 20k lead, whatever. <laughs> like, it's, it's unbeatable. I just, in my brain, no matter what happens in this game, E-Home played a wonderful game. If Vici come back from this deficit, go them. They deserve the win. They're even gonna go for the row They're shot. They're gonna get row shot. It's gonna come up right What's now. They, they literally leave the pit right. like, so a surprise, row shot's here. They don't even have their gyro, and I don't even know if he's willing to buy back for this fight. Cause that, they could just lose the game if he dies twice. And Vici Gaming recognizes that, and they're gonna somehow. Oh, here some comes way. a vacuum. BKB activated by RTK. Gets off the wall, managed to get an illusion off both of them, but RTK is already dead. And so too fall the illusions. Now CTY comes forward, ready to go with his refresher. Puts one Laguna Blade out on Super, who gets Fiend scripted. Now CTY still has that refresher ready to go. Maybe to pop it here for the Queen of Pain, but he gets Orchid it up. Now he pops a refresher. Pops that. Yes, that is beautiful. Pops the BKB and the second Agonims in order to finish off the Queen of Pain. Now Super has to TP out of this one. So cute. Who does Fenrir want to get out? But he's been caught as well. He's going to fall and multiple buybacks out from Vici Gaming, but they're just not going to be here in time to be able to defend Roshan unless they want to do it. Four versus five. Nope, there's a buyback from Fenrir. All right, everyone's committed now to fight around this Roshan pit. Lot him. How? He's going in deep for that kill, but now he's been caught by the vacuum. Bring back. No snowball save from my side size. Where's he going with that one? Goes straight into YJ and the blink away from the Queen of Pain. Ice and Science gets four staff forward. RTK has already used his vacuum, unable to provide a disabled super. Meanwhile, came in from the side, doesn't actually have his ultimate, but a beautiful Ritter's Curse. Holds in, Lonham takes him out single-handedly. YJ comes back, takes out Ice Ice Ice, and Super is now on the run. Gets cycloned up, and the missile's gonna come in to finish him off. Never, never mind, the BKB activated. He needs to be able to stay in range of CTY. He just can't. Without his ultimate, he's not able to do the damage. Now, how drops to the Laguna Blade, and CTY finishes him off. Vici Gaming dropping hero after hero. There's a buyback on the DK, but the Queen of Pain is down for two minutes. And it looks like FY, well, nice four staff over the cliff. He gets away. Still, though, Ehome have. Really bought themselves Roshan, and maybe they just go with second lane of Rax right now. I don't think you hesitate. I think no. you go for the second lane of Rax. You know that CTY has both boots of travel money and buyback. So even if you don't have YJ, who's unlikely to die anyways, you know that the Queen of Pain is dead for 88 seconds without the buyback. The dragon isn't going to risk fighting without her. Like He's going to buyback here, but are they really going to go for the 3v5 defense? I actually think the play is maybe even hope they only go for this one Rax and then back off and go for the Roshan. Because right now, in a 3v5 fight, you're almost guaranteed that you can't win anymore. So, looks like they do want to try to get into a fight, but it might not even matter as ROTK pushes forward. Now, here comes the Cyclone. Super is forced to pop the uh, BKB and his ultimate, but he's being controlled up by the Fiend's Grip and right click down slowly but surely. There's a Cold Embrace, the dying play from Venrir, but it is still Super who will fall. Vici Gaming give up game number two. Ehome found their win. They finally did it. They had such a big lead. Good job for them. They close out a game. But still, Vici Gaming, they made it so uncomfortably close. Like, the fact that they were down 20k, 25k, and it still looked that close. Vici Gaming, they are scary. Yes, they most certainly are. Probably one of the top teams in their group.